over here as a storyteller. Um, interestingly, um, as I was coming this morning, I was in um, a ride ailing cab, and I was trying to prepare, think, um, prepare of, um, think and prepare what I was going to say today, just to brush up my memory. And the cabman refused to let me rest. He was telling me one story after the other. One story after the other. And by the time it was done, we were here. So, when you look at these faces, what comes to mind? Do you like any of these faces? Do you, are you, do you connect with any of them? If you are told to choose any of these faces, choose any of them, choose any of these people, definitely you will choose one or two. I feel drawn to this face. I like this face. I feel comfortable to have this person sit close to me. The question is, why? You've never met any of them but you can immediately begin to draw conclusions and begin to feel that, oh, the one in Barbariga is like a brother I can sit close to him. Or no, he's from another tribe. I don't want to sit close to him. You've never met him. So why? Why are you forming those thoughts? The answer is stories. A couple of years ago, I woke up and I discovered in my adult life that I am drawn to anything that is from the West, from the United States, from the United Kingdom, from the West, and suddenly if I see something that is Russian or Chinese, I'm suddenly wary. The question is why? James Bond, the Rambo, the good guys were from the West, the bad guys were Russians or Chinese. I've never met a Russian, I've never met a Chinese person, I've never even conversed with Americans. But suddenly I have an idea of what I like and what I don't like, whether I like them or whether I don't like them, whether I trust them, whether I don't trust them. Why? Stories. A couple of years ago, I found myself in the cadaver room in my university where medical students were dissecting bodies and I ran, I ran out. I found myself in science class. I found myself studying microbiology. When I always love telling stories, the question I ask myself, why? Because when we're growing up, what you hear is, oh, you're good in science. You're good in, you're good. Your memory is good. You should be a medical doctor. And because of that fact that surrounded me, the constant fact of, oh, you have a good memory, you've got A in this, you should be a medical doctor. I suddenly ignored what I love, telling stories, and I found myself in the cadaver room of an anatomy department. One look at those bodies, I ran away and I did not look back. But the question is, what led me through taking jam? Through taking jam, through going through the process and ending up as a science student? Stories. Stories, they say, are equipment for living. Because every time we try to make, to understand the life that we are, the chaos of life, we try to create all that or the chaos of life through the stories that we tell. So, if we are to reimagine Africa, if we are to think of a different future for Africa than what we have, I posit that the only viable way is to turn to stories. Why? Because from the method of pattern, from the way we connect patterns, from the way we seek, we seek order out of chaos, from the way we try to make cause and effect from situations, where inherently our brain, science has proven, are inherently wired to tell stories, to take in stories, to accommodate stories. So, if we are to imagine Africa 
and we are, we're going to turn to stories, the question is, where are we at this point as Africans? Do we love where we are? Do we know about the past, of, about Africans' past? Do we know where we're going to? A couple, a couple of years ago, I was at Heathrow Airport at the border control point, and someone tapped me, and I looked back. And it was a young African, and he goes, Portuguese? And I'm like, okay, you didn't say French, you didn't say English, Portuguese, where in Africa? And he's like, it was gesticulating, they couldn't say a word in English, I couldn't say a word in Portuguese, and we're like going like this. And finally he shows me his phone. Oh, he's got a blank phone. And the only word he could mutter was sister, sister. So I assumed, oh, your sister is waiting for you outside the airport or somewhere around, but you, can't, you will not be able to reach her because your phone is dead. And as a typical Nigerian guy, I had my power bank. So I said, he said, okay. And then we connected. I gave him the power bank. It was on another queue. And we're looking at ourselves as we're approaching the border control point. And we're signaling. And then he told me, okay, I can come over when he got to his turn. He's got enough juice in his phone. I took my power bank and he said, he couldn't even say thank you. And I did like this. And then we left. That got me thinking. If we are to reimagine Africa, how, or Bini City, just like they, they, they asked a couple of questions, or Nigeria, how well do we know Africa? What are we reimagining? How well do you know the history of Africa? How well do we love Africa? Because at that point, and I went to, 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 to ask questions, I went to search, I went to read. Oh, it's from Equatorial Guinea. Okay, French, Spanish, Portuguese. Oh, interesting. Ah, so we've got African countries that were colonized by the Portuguese. So I started reading about Africa. I started reading about Equatorial Guinea. So, the question is if we don't know much about Africa. I've traveled to a couple of countries outside the continent, but I've not been to any African country. What am I reimagining? When you think of Africa, the only thing you think, you see, you are thinking of oh, war, famine, corruption, because absolutely that's the narrative, which is a fact in quotes, they are facts, but it's become a narrative. And that's the only thing you think you know about Ghana, about Nigeria, about Kenya, about South Africa, about Mozambique, countries you've never gone to, people you've never interacted to, with, and suddenly you are absolutely sure you know a certain truth about them. So how do we get out of this, log, of this chaos? How do we reimagine Africa from where we're, we're at? It, could, it, it gets confusing at times. You don't even know where you're at. But he said, like a Chinese proverb said, that if you, if you, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is now. So if you want to reimagine Africa, if you want to tell a new story for Africa, where do we start? And naturally, as a storyteller, I turn to a tool that's used by storytellers to analyze and to tell stories. They call it dramatic structure. Um, sometimes it's called um, the three act or the five act structure, called the freight tag. But it's essentially, it helps you to tell and analyze stories. So, um, let's play a little game. Let's tell a little story. Let's imagine Monique is with her boyfriend and they're taking a stroll in the park. And suddenly, an alien comes around and snatch the boyfriend away. Then she knows she's got a problem. Her first reaction at this moment of exposition is everything is going fine in the movie. That's when the family, they're eating, they're having dinner, they're going to parties. And that was when Monique was walking with her boyfriend through this park. And suddenly, at this point, which is called the inciting incident, an alien comes and snatches the boyfriend away. So our next reaction will tell us who Monique is and a view about life. If Monique decides that, way hell no, I'm going to go after this alien and take him down, then it tells us something about Monique. She loves this guy. She desires this guy. And then she goes. 
And because human beings naturally do not expend more energy than they are supposed to, they, 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 they want to, when they are in any situation, they, they go for the easiest route first. She goes and gets a gun. I'm going to blow his head off, this alien's head off. She goes into the forest. She sees the alien. The boyfriend is screaming behind, help. And then she shoots the alien. The alien falls to the ground and she's happy. And then she sees that the alien is bleeding green. And every drop that falls on the ground, new aliens are emerging. Then she knows that she's got a problem. If she turns and leaves and go back to where she's coming from and say, oh, I'm done. It tells us the kind of love that she's got for this man. But if she goes again and says, okay, I need, I, need, I need to do something. I need to search. I need to, there must be a way to solve this problem. She, maybe she finds a mentor who tells her, oh, you can get a bigger gun. You can do this. And finally, there's a kryptonite that you can use that can affect this alien. And she goes on this journey. We can see that she, this is a journey in problem solving. She's trying to solve a problem because she has a certain love and a desire for a certain person. And then she goes, she, she gets the kryptonite and she takes down the alien, one of the alien and gets a man back. But the question is, someone screams from behind. The daughter of the, of the mentor has also been taken. So if she decides to ignore the call and live with her boyfriend, it tells us something different about her. But when she, if she decides to say, oh, there are other people in this place. I can't just live like this. It means that she's learning something new. Then she goes back to meet people. Do you have your relative in this forest? There's a, there are a lot of aliens if taking our people. We need to... Suddenly, this Monique, that was just a lover girl, at the beginning of this story, I started collaborating. Along the line, she's learned humility to go and beg for help. Along the line, she's collaborating. And then everybody comes together. And if they defeat the alien, or not. If not, they find, they find another way to deal with this situation. They keep trying. Because why? It started with love and desire. At the end of the story, when you get to the denomination, when you get to the end of the story, when you get to fall in action, when you get to the end of the story, when it's a flat line, they've gotten what they wanted, they've, gotten, they've killed the aliens by collaboration, and then you look at Monique. She's different from the first Monique we saw. She's now, she now has a new identity. And then she has a new purpose. She can go around the world telling people this is how to kill aliens. That's a new purpose. She's got light now because purpose brings light. So I proceed to say that stories show that when you have love and desire, you begin to solve problems. These problems that you solve shape your identity. Your identity define your purpose. And your purpose is like light that you shine in darkness. So, why then do we, how then do we reimagine Africa when we now know that first we need to love Africa, we need to desire Africa, we need to seek knowledge about Africa, we need to read about history. Africa is so rich in history, Benin City is so rich in history. By the time you begin to read the history of Queen Mother Idea, by the time you begin to read about the Benin Moats, you, you, be, you begin to see a certain love and desire within you. And if someone tells you that this city is like this, and it's contrary to the information that you've got, you say no. Yes, it's like this, but there are also others like this. There are also great stories that we can tell about this city. So the question is, if someone is in, interested in your identity, if someone is interested in your purpose, if someone is interested in deciding what you love or what you don't, what would they go through? Stories. So the moment I discovered that, oh, the reason why I don't like the Russian and the Chinese is because of, I used to watch too many, too many Rambo films. I started watching a lot of Russian films and Chinese films. I started to see things from my perspective. I grew empathy. My identity started to change. If we are to imagine Africa, and we know that stories, are important. What do we do about stories? What, how do we tell these stories? Like we said in the ex example of Monique and the alien, I just created a fine story now so you can write about it, Monique and the alien. We learn to solve problems. We learn a level of humility. We learn collaboration. 
We learn how to seek knowledge. We learn that courage is not the absence of fear, but it's just deciding to go ahead anyway because you love and you want to, you have a desire to make something right. Honesty, sacrifice. You learn how to take risk. This is a veritable in- ingredient in that simple story that you watch and you think is just a story. It's just a simple story. Because in storytelling, everything you've heard about Africa, about Bini City, are certain truths that you heard from people, from news, from films, from experiences in court. They are facts. But in storytelling, fact is what happens. Truth is what you think about it. The fact is, the picture, the first picture is the picture of the Bini Moats. Um, by length, is the most extensive earthwork in the world. Second largest man-made structure after the Great Wall of China. Fantastic story behind it. Fantastic engineering that the Europeans were stunned when they saw it. Yes, but on the other side is the present Benimot. So it's the, that's what you are seeing. They are facts, but the truth when you begin to reimagine Africa. And you begin to love Africa, and you have the Africa, that desire that Africa should move forward. When you see this, you're not going to tweet, oh, look at the former Benimot, look at the present Benimot. No, we are going to say, oh, we can take this Benimot back to his glory days. That's a truth, which is different from the fact. And because you are talking about it, you are tweeting about it, you are aware that this was the former past glo- was the former glory and this is where we should take it to. You are not just pointing fingers. You are seeking solutions. You know that there's a problem and you want to solve it. So if one of us one day, if it becomes, if, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it starts to trend and somebody, somebody somewhere, 18 year old, 19 year old, one day will be in a position of authority and the person is in charge of this structure, in charge of putting this structure together, she's going to remember that someone said this once. So it's not... The fact is what happens. The truth is what you think about it. So with that said, now that we know that for Africa to reinvent itself, for us to reimagine Africa, we need new stories. We, are, we're not only need, we do not only need new stories, we need to seek out new stories. Why do I say so? For every story of a corrupt African, there are stories of five Africans who are doing great. That's the truth. It's easy, it's lazy to, just to check facts and take it as truth. But it's hard work to seek out truth. We have 22 Nobel laureates in Africa out of, in nine countries. Four out of the top ten emerging economies in the world is in Africa. One in every three African is a mem- member of the middle class. If you are looking to inspire the young ones about getting the first female president, you c- can't look to America. They don't have one. With seven female presidents in Africa. But you need to seek it out and tell those stories. Apart from seeking out those stories, we need to tell absolutely, create new stories. How? Many years ago, you need to go to a publisher, you need to beg a publisher for many years to get your story across, a few thousand people. But now, with your phone, you can tweet. That's why Instagram is called Instagram stories. They're stories. Everything you say, every negative story you say and you retweet, you are holding either light or darkness. So the question is, do you want to tell stories of darkness or do you want to tell stories of light? We need to seek out and to tell new stories. Not only to feel powerless, because we are not powerless. We need to see that a simple story, as simple as that policeman who didn't collect a bribe, it's a small light, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting story. There's a certain truth to it. When you tell that story to someone, it inspires someone that someone is seeing what I'm doing. When you tell the story, oh, I have my neighbor, she's, um, she's the only child, she has an old grandmother, she takes care of her family. It is not just a simple story. Every story is an idea. What idea are you selling? No tweets, no tweets that you are retweeting is a mistake. It's an idea. 
So you need to choose that it, does this align with my vision of Africa? Does it align with the vision of Benin City? Before you tweet it, before you tell those stories. One of, one of the, um, my best stories is in the form, form of a poem by Kwesi Brew, which is called The Mesh. It says, we have come to the crossroads and I must either leave or come with you. I lingered over the choice, but in the darkness of my doubts, you lifted the lamp of, your, of love and in your face, I saw the path to take. It's interesting because it started with love, because Africa is at the crossroads. And we need the light of love and desire to change the narrative of Africa. You are not powerless. Even if it's a small light, a small story, a small story that's happening in your neighborhood, a small story you are telling, a small story of imagining that there is a rail station from Cape to Cairo. Imagine I'm going to Kenya, I'm entering a train from Lagos and I'm taking that train to South Africa. Tell that story. It fires the imagination of our leaders. It influences the decision makers, whether you like it, whether you believe it or, or, or not. When they begin to see these things, they begin to see that it's possible. So, don't feel powerless. Don't think that light is too small. I'm just in one small corner. No, you're not. We all add up to make a critical mass, to create a tribe of change makers. Because a wise man once said, all the darkness in the world, let, them, let all the darkness in the world gather together and crowd around you. They can never extinguish the light of a single candle. In Monique's story, there will be some people who will be watching her. Our beautiful story called Monique and the Alien. They'll be watching her. They will just pass. You see them in movies. They're just going. My admission today, apart from reimagining Africa and telling new stories, is please, don't be a wakapas. Thank you.